guys, I hope that you are enjoying a magnificent day. This is such an amazing day to give thanks for all of the blessings that we have so richly enjoyed. I want to talk about my experience working for Uncle Jeff. I initially worked for Uncle Jeff in 2017 seasonally. And during that time, I actually kind of enjoyed the work environment. It was fast paced. I worked with good people and we were doing sortation. The challenge that I had at that facility was the pallet building. And every day I would write on the board and request that at stand up and during our stretching times when they were making announcement that they would have a pallet building demonstration on how to do it right. The challenge I felt was the numbers that were required by the associates. So if you hit a certain amount of numbers, there were incentives for hitting that number, which I feel contributed to unsafe pallet building. And I remember being there and there was an old lady and this pallet fell on this old lady because people just weren't doing it right. So every day I would write and request on the board that during stand up, they would show proper pallet building procedures. They never did. And one day I was writing that on the board and one of the ladies from HR said to me, would you quit writing that on the board? Everybody has already seen that already. They are going to deal with it. Even the plant manager, he's seen it. They are going to deal with it. So I backed off and nothing ever got done about it. So I started writing it again and I wrote it every day until I left. But for that month that I worked for Uncle Jeff, I worked right after Thanksgiving and through December 31st, I grossed over $4,000. So that was the great thing about Uncle Jeff and still is that he's very generous and he has no problem paying you. The best thing that came out of working for Amazon and it's very hard work, make no mistake about it. But the best thing that came out of working for Amazon was my body. Oh my word. Two months after I was working for Amazon, I was still smiling when I looked in the mirror and I would say about my body, ah, oh, yes, this is the body by Jeff. I had muscles that I hadn't seen in years. So that was the best thing for me about working for Amazon. Well, I'm working for Amazon again, and I still feel the same way. When I went to Amazon, there was this kind of awestruck that I had because it was amazing to me that one man's dream would encompass taking care of so many families and blessing so many people. And I still feel that way. I feel grateful for the opportunity to work for Amazon. Um, the work is harder. And when I went there this time, initially, I thought, whoo, when they said we're going to give up to 60 hours a week, I thought, wow, I'm going to work 60 hours a week. But then after the first night, I was like, nah. When she said people went to the restroom and they never returned back to work, I was laughing. But then during the first night, I thought, okay, I see why. At this facility, we are doing stowing as opposed to sortation. The challenge with this is the bathroom situations and that kind of thing. Now you can go to the bathroom whenever you like, but just know that if you go to the bathroom, chances are your work is going to be so piled on top of you that you won't get caught up. And during orientation, the first night they said, Hey, if you need to go to the restroom, let your line leader know so they could take over for you. So one night I did that. When I got back, I was so angry. I couldn't see straight. I had boxes piled so high. And I was so angry at him because I, I told him where my scanner was. I told him everything and he just left me hanging. So I learned from that night um, and I did it twice. I learned from that night uh, not to do that again. The challenge with stowing is that people who get areas that order a lot of packages, they usually get the same amount of lines as people who have 
limited areas. So you have some people who are just absolutely just getting snowed over all night in an avalanche of boxes and packages and some people who are working at a minimal pace. Um, they do have the number incentives. When I got there, they want you to stow 400 pieces per hour. Now, during the shift, eight hour shift, you're talking about about 3,200 pieces. The challenge with that is the same challenge that I had in 2017 is equipment. This is almost a trillion dollar company and the equipment is faulty. I mean, it is really faulty. So I get there early now to make sure that I get a phone and a scanner that works properly. Because if you don't, you're going to have a miserable night trying to find proper working equipment. And a lot of times, if you mess up and you don't get there or you take on an extra shift and you have to get the leftover equipment, it just doesn't work properly. So when they're counting your numbers, they don't take any of that into consideration. Everybody knows from the top of management all the way down that the equipment is faulty and there's no leniency for having faulty equipment. That's something that's beyond your control. Also, and I, I heard these girls in the cafeteria the other night. One girl had grapes and she offered them to another. She said, no, I can't have grapes because they walk, they run right through me. And do you know I'm not going to have them here because then I would have to go to the bathroom. And it's like, ooh, that's, that's the thing. Oh, the other thing is in this facility, in the other facility, you had bathrooms like all over the facility. In this particular facility, your bathrooms are all the way across and all the way back, they encourage you to stay hydrated at these facilities, which is a great idea. But if you stay hydrated, then you're going to have to go to the bathroom. But if you go to the bathroom, you know the downside of having to go to the restroom. The downside is you're going to get behind in your work. Your numbers are, you're not going to meet your numbers and chances are somebody might come and talk to you about that. Another challenge that I've run into this time is they send everybody home. So they send a lot of people home. You can have voluntary time off. And sometimes they oversend people home so that the people who are still left, they are just, just overwhelmed with the amount of work that's left. I, well, they didn't ask for my opinion, so I can't tell you what I think. I would like though, for people, especially in areas that are wealthy, that are going to um, have more packages, then they should have one line per, per ship. That's it. All of these three to five lanes of packages, sometimes you can't even move from that one line because it's so overwhelming. Now, the thing that I've liked so far, I have done picking. I don't like picking. Stowing for me is better, but I love being able to just go and catch up. So a lot of times you'll have one lane that nobody's been able to get to because they're overwhelmed on their own lane. And you go and you work that lane down until it's nothing. Now that I like. The only thing I don't like about that is if I get in a situation where somebody hasn't packed properly and they've just thrown boxes in there. And that's another thing. They want you to be particular about the way you, you pack the totes. They want to get the maximum packing per tote, which makes sense. The challenge if you are going behind somebody else is not everybody takes that very seriously. So then you're rearranging boxes. And even with that, nobody takes into account that you have to sometimes take jiffies out and to uh, properly fit packages in with the jiffies. And you have to rearrange packages and jiffies when you get a gigantic package that goes in there and there's room for it. So none of that stuff is taken into account when 
your numbers when they look at your numbers. Another thing that's not taken into account is if you get into an area that has lots of boxes and you have to close the totes, that's another thing. So when you close the totes, time is still counted against you. Sometimes you have to walk across the warehouse to get another open tote because they're just none in your area. All of that stuff is counting against your time. That would be something that if you're closing a tote, I wish they would stop the time and give you time to reset up and open a new tote and all of that stuff. Because when you're doing that and you're moving the tote to the proper area and everything, it only counts as one point of hurt. So for all of that time that you're closing a tote, taking it to the proper area, stacking it properly, going to get another one, putting it into the slot and uh, rescanning it, all of that is time that's counting against you. Now, if you come to work for Uncle Jeff, just know that you are going to work. You're going to find yourself bruised where boxes have hit you and you're so busy working, you don't know until you get home, but you will definitely be exhausted when you are done working for Uncle Jeff. Let me see if there's anything else that I can think of to tell you. I do want to give kudos for the people who have worked for Uncle Jeff for years. The only thing that I think would be more equitable for those people is if the people who work for Uncle Jeff and have been faithful for years, if they didn't get the same rate that the people who are coming in get. So I'm just coming into Amazon to work seasonally again. I'm making the same money that people who've been there two and three years are making. And I think there should be some incentive that rewards those people for their faithfulness. Another thing that I found at Amazon, you have people who really bust their tails and they work very hard. And then you have people because they're going to make the same money anyway. They're just like, ah, there's no need for me to kill myself because I'm going to make the same money anyway. So that is something else that I think Amazon should look into. Rewarding people who have been faithful to them and giving them incentives to show their appreciation for those employees. Because people like me, I'm going to be in Amazon and I'm going to be out of Amazon. But for the people who keep Amazon rolling all year long, I think that there should be some additional perks for them even if it's just seasonally. So if you give them a raise just for season peak, I think that would be fair. So that's my take on working for Amazon. It is very hard work. It is grueling. It is hard. You're on your feet all day. You're going to get bruised. Definitely wear long sleeves because if you don't, you can get um, cut paper cuts from the boxes, from the cardboard. Stay safe and look out for your well-being. Always look out for your well-being. Oh, <laughs> another funny story. And this was from 2017. I kid you not. There was a gentleman. He was scanning and he was so tired. The poor thing, he was asleep, standing up with his head leaning on the box. And I went over and I woke him up and he didn't even know where he was. He didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know anything. And he looked around and realized where he was. And he didn't even know he was asleep, poor thing. But uh, later on, it was either in the same shift or another day. Bless his heart, he was asleep again. So if you come to Amazon to work, you are definitely going to work. Amazon is not a place if you're not physically, um, if you don't want a lot of physical exertion, Amazon is not the place for you. Amazon is not the place for me long-term because that's not what I want to do with my life. But I feel grateful for Amazon because it reminds me that I don't want to work this hard like that forever. I see people there who are really old and I feel so sorry for them because it's like you work for your entire life. And at the end of your life, you still can't afford your lifestyle. And that's not to be condescending to them. It's just a reminder that Wage slavery leads into nothingness and it leads to you 
grinding all of your life trying to just get a piece of that dream. Stay blessed. Be good. Bye-bye.